Are you a macOS enthusiast looking to make your first macOS app? But you're not really sure what technology to use. Should you go for SwiftUI or AppKit? I built three rather complex apps with SwiftUI. In some cases, I had to drop down to AppKit. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my experience, give you a little review of SwiftUI for macOS what to look out for, what are the pros and what are the things that don't work so well. I will show you the free apps that I built to have some foundations to discuss this so that by the end of this video, you have a better idea in what you sign up for when you choose SwiftUI for your next or first macOS project. Okay, let's start with the first app that I'm showing you. This is the app. This is actually my first app that is around for two years now. <laughs> And I originally made this app for the iPad. It's a note-taking, mind-mapping learning app. Last year, I added a macOS version, a proper one, simply because I needed to rewrite the whole drawing layer for the mind map feature. It is not ideal. I... So this is an app that I published in the App Store. I will leave the link in the description. It is quite buggy, so don't have too high expectations. If you were wondering how I make these maps or these overviews, this is the app that I use. I'm running here on macOS 14 in the beta version. So some of the stuff is a little bit uh, tricky. I use the newer navigation split views because they're more stable and allow me some more adjustments. What I don't really like is that you don't have so much control over the toolbar. Uh, for example, I wanted to be more precise in where I place things, but somehow it's always ending up in a different one. So you don't have as much flexibility as you if you could go with the storyboard, so AppKit. What I want to have is a folder structure with nested folders that you can reorder. Unfortunately, this is nothing you can properly do in SwiftUI. You have lists with on move, but this is just on one level. With this nested, it's not possible. So I had to write some custom code with on drag and on drop. For example, if I create a new folder, test i can take this and then move it in this folder and then move it up again but as you see it is working but not as nice as i wanted very similar for moving in each of these folders i have notes different kinds of note exercises and if i for example want to move this one to a different group i can this is again some custom code with on drag and drop with and its item provider so now it is moved in here just going to move this in the other folder back. I probably should have dropped down to AppKit, but as long as it's not too bad, I prefer to stay in SwiftUI because this kind of things it takes also quite a lot of code in AppKit. I have some problems with state restoration of keeping the selected folders and notes, and sometimes it doesn't store it properly or it doesn't call the scene phase properly. So here, if you when you use the scene phase. It just doesn't get it properly sometimes. So I did write my own app delegate just to make sure I can call it more often save or restoring things. This also changed with the macOS versions. The nice thing with SwiftUI is you can create cross-platform apps. And if you use a universal target, so when you create a project and you say you want cross-platform, you can easily create a subscription that is valid for all of the platforms so the user can have start his subscription on the iPad and then use the same one on the Mac. So that's very cool. I used Revenue Cat for this. For example, in the settings window, I implemented here a little subscription view. Same for the paywalls of these features. Now, as you see, this is a drawing area. And maybe I just create, I'm going to use one of the ones that <laughs> I don't need for later. This is just for SwiftUI layout, where I was thinking of how to structure things. This kind of drawing you can't do with SwiftUI because you need to have, you need to do a lot of performance optimizations. So I had to write this in AppKit and I actually had to drop down to core graphics and metal. First, it's more of a hassle to write separate code for AppKit and UIKit, but you can share a lot because there's a lot of similarities between this kind of view controllers. And the other thing, since I was dropping down to core graphics so much, uh, this again is the same. Um, draw and React is the same for both iOS and macOS. 
A uh, little bit of differences with working with layers, CA layers, uh, because I used here CA tiled layers, again, something very specific uh, for performance optimizations, which you probably don't need a lot. Um, but otherwise, this is going to be very slow. Um, and I need to here be able to really edit stuff. Unfortunately, I still have a lot of problems with crashing. Some things that you might expect is adding here an undo and redo. So if I press command Z, now you see I change the colors and comment and then redo again. So this is quite a lot of data flow going here from very low level <laughs> up to the toolbar. I used the undo manager instances, passing it around. I used a lot of combine, especially for UI kit and app kit. Uh, to get the updates properly, because every time you drop down to AppKit, your data flow gets a lot more, a lot harder. Uh, you need to be very precise of when you call what. Maybe my example is probably quite heavy. The second example is a JTTP client that I built. And again, I use navigation split view for this with groups of different chats. And in the main area, I have a list with all these chat messages. Now, this list is actually one of the main hassles I had working with Swift UI because lists are not very good for performance optimization. This is because the underneath the app kit component as an as table view works quite different than UI table view. And for the Mac, they need to know the cell size. <laughs> Somehow when I do this in Swift UI, it always stutters. I'm going to show you this. So here, this is now in AppKit. Please pay attention to the smoothness of the scrolling. Okay, I undid some of the changes. So now I again use the list for this component. Okay, now try to scroll. This actually got better with macOS 14, so the better version I'm running. So I don't know, maybe they optimized something. But for S13 is much worse. And then you have some jumps because it calculates in between the cell sizes. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this. It's not just smooth, it's also some performance issues. I'm going to link some resources I found from people that got more into details with this. But definitely this is an issue with the list in macOS. Okay, let's now talk about some of the nicer stuff. Like here, I can use the advanced filter for searching for multiple things and like I can generate tokens and say search for something that has these all these terms adding here with some filters you can also use search scopes I didn't use this because there's some issue with the text editing toolbar here but definitely have a look at the search it's pretty great and rather easy to implement especially if you can afford being on macOS 13 to get the tokens then let's have a look at the settings window which you can easily create by defining in the main app file another view with the settings group for example in this case i added a color preference and said make this dark now everything is dark or the default then I added here the menu bar extra. This is here, this one. It's basically the small version of my main app. And I just simply, I can change here the size of this menu bar extra to make it wider and higher by changing the view that we give here in this menu bar extra. This is then coming here from app storage. I saved these values in app storage. This is typically what you do with the settings. And then these are used for the size of the main chat view. So getting this menu bar extra is quite straightforward and you can easily reuse some of your main views in this area. In order to get these settings properly here, you have to use a tab view with forms. So you get this rather cool layout per default. One of the features that you're still missing on macOS is that we don't have a text field in, or text editor in Swift UI that works with rich text. So here, these components, these, views i wanted to have i wanted to be able to change the text so i have to and i want to be able to modify stuff here like doing oh yeah i have a response from jttp this is pretty cool i'm going to use here highlighting so again i had to write a ns viewer presentable to go down to app kit some of the other interesting things that you can do on 
macOS is doing here on Hoover, for example, only if I'm in this area, you see the extra things that are available, like you can hide something, uh, you can copy to clipboard. So for example, I can copy this message and then paste it in another text field. Some of the things that are not so nice is having here inspector area. Now with macOS 14, they have the inspector modifier. So this is a little bit easier. On macOS, you can also use a a split view and a V split view, uh, because what you want to have is here is the ability to drag this views larger and smaller. And then for this, I used here an H split view. If you use normal H stack, you won't be able to drag this around. So this is one of the things you definitely want to have on macOS. Talking about dragging things, I was just interested in seeing how much I can push it. For example, I want to drag this one here to my uh, desktop and then drop it as a text. But stuff like this is quite complicated or exporting things. Additionally, I added a lot of keyboard shortcuts uh, with scene phase to get a connection between this menu and the main window. This is also a hassle because depending on where you attach this, it might cause redraws too much and I got another performance issue from this. But the main thing that I'm always struggling is drag and drop. They added a protocol for this. But sometimes because <laughs> I drop to AppKit, then it just falls apart <laughs> because I can't use transformables on AppKit. Not in this case, but in the, for the other app. And now to the last project, which is a note-taking app. This is for a course that I built for macOS development with core data. So this is nice because then I can just <laughs> push and see how much features uh, I can add. And in this case, I actually implemented here this share functionality. So here I created a rich text format. Uh, let's just save this on the desktop. I can open this. So here you can generate, I just created a more complex document from this data. I still struggle with the document types uh, because in this case I didn't get the image. Convert, yeah, fine, convert. So actually I wanted to have the image directly in there. Save, let's see if I can save this. Yeah, I guess I should have stored it as a rich text format document. As you can see, I also added here a little bit of drag and drop for images. So you can also do stuff. Okay, let's say I have this image that I want to store in my system. You can use drag and drop and I'm just going to drag this here in this area because you need to decide the drop targets. So I would say I drop it here. And now I grab the URL, clean it a little bit and then load the image from the web and store it in core data, data persistence in core data. Similarly, you would also, you can also do stuff like loading it from your photos app. I think drag and drop is quite common for macOS apps and it's very intuitive. So I was trying to <laughs> see how much I can actually use it. I did add here the possibility to link nodes from one to the other. So for example, I want to link from this node to the virtual reality node. So I can also grab this and drop it in this area. Now I go to the, you can, now you see there's another button for this node. If I tap, I jump to this node. Programmatic navigation is very important. Obviously I can also use here, open a new window. As you see, I use here a different window style. This is a different window type and I use in order to open this, the environment property for open window, which is new for macOS 13. If you can <laughs> use macOS 13 for macOS development, because they have a lot of window support. For example, I can change the position of this window, the size, the default behavior, uh, the navigation, the toolbar style here to make it more compact. Other things that I wanted to do with this programmatic navigation is here, for example, I want to add a menu item for open recent. And now I go to gaming apps and it opens this app. Actually probably should have also moved the folder. This again changed with macOS 14. I need to check what happened. It might also be the undo manager that I use. So I need to find out. Then I also wanted to have here this back and forward button switch on macOS 14 changed again. So we see how I can, I'm not really sure if it's the navigation split view, <laughs> the state, the undo manager that I use, so I need to check. This is one thing to keep in mind when you use SwiftUI, things might change quite a lot. 
and you need to check the different macOS versions for this. Some of the problems I have is also with if you add too many things, like here, I if you double tap, this is a text field. Then you can change the name of these folders. But I also added here context menu, for example, to delete this or create a new subfolder. Sometimes it doesn't take the correct gesture or it's, as you see here, it now goes for the text field. Similar, if I want to try to drag this around, I couldn't use the text field. So this is then again, if I try, so I added this to this icons, which I can drag. So that kind of works, but not as much as I want to. I know they added some kind of functionality where you can decide which gestures work and which priority. So I need to check this for macOS 14. But that's the main thing with macOS. You expect a lot of functionality working in different ways, like context menus and dragging things. It's not just how it works in SwiftUI. It's also a lot of knowledge about UX design, especially when you come from iOS. On macOS, we don't need to take care of touch targets. I don't. I can make my buttons here as small as I want to, which is really nice. If I say I want to go to this folder, I can just add this as a on tab gesture. And you see, I moved uh, the. And you see, I moved this folder to the one that I just selected. Macos apps are typically for productivity. You expect a lot of keyboard shortcuts, drag and drop, very well working, very sleek design very good UX design, so the standards is quite high. And I think that's why people complain about using SwiftUI because the expectations are here and SwiftUI is, is just not there yet. Just know that in a lot of cases you can go to the extra mile. For example, with my table view issues, if you target macOS 13 and higher, I think SwiftUI is quite good also for the navigation grid view. If you're lower, maybe you're starting your <laughs> main app with AppKit and then drop down for the individual views to SwiftUI. So you can do it either way around the very top level is AppKit and then you go to SwiftUI or you start with SwiftUI and then you go down to AppKit whenever you need. Sometimes it's really difficult because as I said, I have problems with drag and drop uh, because I need to work with NS item provider in AppKit and the types are weird. What you, It's just not that easy. So finding a solution that works for all of the situations can be a challenge. If you just want to make a companion app for iOS and you already have the main code in SwiftUI, then definitely you can use a lot of the code for macOS. If you have a lot in UI kit, you might also be interested in using Catalyst. I did that before because I had a lot of drawing code with pencil kit and then Catalyst is just the fastest way of getting things going. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of resources of how to fine tune from Catalyst, so please be aware of this. Also, I'm not sure how future proof this is. And apparently there's also some bugs introduced when you use Catalyst. So again, you need to test a lot and it might be a, quite a bit of a time constraint on you. Overall, I would say if you're planning to make a macOS app just for yourself to try things, SwiftUI is a great option and you can get a lot done. You can have menu bar apps, widgets is now new with also interactable widgets. Apple pushed macOS. They added a lot of features in the last years, specifically for macOS, which is very great to build more advanced apps. There's the features that the users expect. I would highly recommend using Swift UI, unless you're super picky with all the details and the fine tuning. But please be aware it's taking more time. If you want to actually see how to build a macOS app with SwiftUI, I'm going to link another tutorial where I build a basic app with SwiftUI. Otherwise, you can also check out my course on SwiftUI for macOS with core data because when I was checking what storage solutions macOS apps use, then there's a lot of them using core data with iCloud Sync. It's a very established technology and it doesn't cost you. To, you don't need to have a server running so you can get up and running quite quickly, especially for productivity apps with a lot of complex data. So also go check that one out. Please like this video and let me know in the comments how your experience with SwiftUI for macOS are. <laughs> what were the struggles? What did you actually like? And how happy were you with the final product that you built? Until next time, happy coding.